what I did, uh, we did speak uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah was salat was salam ala ashraf al anbiya wa mursaleen. Nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma anfa'na bima alimtana wa alimna ma yanfa'una. Allahumma zidna ilman innaka anta alimul hakim. Allahumma ij'al hadhihi al muhadara hujjatan lana la hujjatan alayna ya rabbil alameen. Amma ba'ad. This is our seventh. This is our seventh class uh, dealing with um, the fiqh of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah taala. In this class, uh, we we just finished the chapter al um, miyat We finished the three parts of water. We have water that is tahor, which is purifying. Water that is tahir, which is pure and water that is nejis, or impure. And yesterday, or last week, we spoke about, um, we spoke about uh, certainty. We spoke about certainty. And, and certainty is not removed with doubts. Certainty is not removed with doubts. Inshallah, we were supposed to have a test today, but I'm unprepared for the test. I'm not prepared. So inshallah, maybe next week we'll, we'll pick up on the test. In the meantime, we'll just add this next chapter, which is uh, Bab al Aniya. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to discuss uh, Bab al Aniya. Al Aniya is a form of vessel. Now, the thing about this particular chapter is that the relevance of in the time that we're living in now is. You know, I tried to think of uh, some things that will make it a little more relevant, but it's, it's difficult uh, because, you know, most people don't use uh, vessels for the most part. So this is why we're going to cover it because, inshallah ta'ala, it's still important to know. And we're going to cover it, inshallah. Uh, it's, from, it's in the book of Bahara, the chapter of dealing with vessels. So Imam Hajjawi, he starts off by saying, Bab al the chapter dealing with vessels and containers. And he says, Kullu, Kullu ina'in ta'irin, Kullu ina'in ta'irin. Every vessel that we have or that a person can use is ta'ir. So the ulama or the scholars of al-Islam, generally when they speak about things like this, they say that it is permissible. Is permissible. In other words, kullu uh, ina'in ta'irin. Yeah, every type of vessel is pure. There's nothing wrong with it. This is the origin of every single vessel that we use. The origin is that it is what pure. All right. Then he says walo thaminin, and he says walo. Even if it's expensive, this low, this even if, it indicates that there's some difference of opinion among the scholars of Al Islam. Anytime we read any classical work. And we find any of the scholars of the past mentioning something like wallow, even if. In other words, they're saying every vessel is pure, even if it's expensive. This would indicate that someone may have a problem with a vessel or a container that's expensive. Okay? Then he says, Yubahu ittakhaduhu wa It is permissible. It is permissible to take it in. And to benefit from it. So it's two things here. He says that vessels are permissible. Any type of vessel or container. They're permissible to take in huh, and to use. It's permissible to take them in and it's also permissible to use them. Does this make sense so far? Simple, right? Now mind you, this is not like water. This is a little, you know, a little more easier to comprehend. Inshallah. Is this clear so far? All right. <clears throat> so now... The first thing he mentions is that all types of vessels are pure. The origin, 
The origin of all the vessels that they are permissible to use. The origin of all vessels is that they are that, huh? That it's permissible to use. That's the origin of all vessels, right? After that, he says, even if it's expensive. He said it is permissible to take them, to take them in. So perhaps you might have a vessel, you don't use it, but you just put it, you place it um, on your mantelpiece or something, or on a table in the house. People have vessels like that, right or wrong, bowls and so on and so forth. So he says, it's permissible to take any type of vessel, and it's also permissible to use any type of vessel. So once they mention everything that's permissible, now he's going to mention the things that are what? Impermissible. So the first thing he mentioned is every vessel is permissible, and then at the end he's going to say, except. Except what? Does anyone know? Does anyone have any idea of what type of vessels in Islam that are impermissible for Muslims to use? Ahsant, Ahsant, gold and silver. So then he says, So he mentions three characteristics. And I wrote it on the board here. He mentions three characteristics of vessels that are impermissible to use. Okay? Three characteristics or three types. Three types or three kinds of vessels that are impermissible to use. And we're going to talk about it. All right? So, the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, he says in the authentic hadith, لا تشربوا في آنية الذهب والفضة ولا تأكلوا في سحافها فإنها لهم في الدنيا ولكم في الآخرة. And Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam, he said in the authentic hadith, that was reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And he says, do not drink in the vessels of gold and silver. And do not eat in them either. Do not eat in plates made of gold and silver. For innaha lahum fid dunya wa lakum fil akhirah. For indeed it is for them, the non-Muslims, the non-believers, for them in this world and for the Muslims in the next life. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam he also says, الَّذِي يَأْكُلُوا وَيَشْرَبُوا فِي آنِيَةِ ذَهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ إِنَّمَا يُجَرْجِرُوا فِي بَطْنِهِ نَارَ جَهَنَّمِ مُتَفِقٌ عَلَيْهِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever eats or drinks from these vessels that are gold and silver, then they will be dragged or they will be drugged on their stomachs or they will be drugged to the hellfire, يوم القيامة, or نَارَ uh, جَهَنَّمِ They will be taken to the hellfire. So this here also shows the shadid or the, the strong warning against eating out of vessels or drinking from vessels that have gold or made of gold and silver. So then he says, these vessels that are impermissible, he said that they are either gold, which is, I don't have it here, but anyway, they're either gold or silver, right? But then he mentions Gold, you cannot use gold at all. You cannot use gold, and you cannot use silver. And you also cannot use anything that has a mixture of gold and silver in them for vessels. So how many things were mentioned? I didn't write that on the board, but how many? Don't worry about this yet. We're going to get to this in a minute, because I don't want to confuse you. Right now, there are three issues. We cannot use vessels or plates that, have, that are made of gold, silver, and something that is a mixture of gold and silver. Is that clear? Thank you. Is it gold? I don't know gold. So you got to, no, no, no. So then if, it's, so then if it has gold in it, we can't use it. Or on it. It's gold. It's made of, it has some gold on it. So it's three things then. Something that is gold, they call it dhahab al-khalis, that is made strictly of gold. Or fiddah al-khalis, that is strictly made of silver. Or mudabban bihima. Or it's some, like welded or soldered into it some form of gold or silver. A lot of it. Is that clear? Ah. Alhamdulillah. Tayyip. So then. 
Then after that, they make another exception or another uh, exception to this rule. So right now, what's understood about gold vessels and silver vessels that we can't use them, right? And then he gives us three types, whether it's all gold, all silver, or it has a mixture of gold and silver in them. We can't use them. But then there is an exception. So the exception, it says, فَإِنَّهُ يَحْرُمُ اتِّخَاذُهَا وَاسْتِعْمَالُهَا it is impermissible for a Muslim to take them. So even if you have these types of vessels and you put them up in a nice place just for decoration, so it's impermissible to have them and it's also impermissible to use them. Go ahead, Shay. Even for decoration, it's impermissible. Ittikhaduha. Ittikhaduha means to take them in, to have them in possession, to have them in your possession. Plates and bowls that are gold and silver, plates and bowls, vessels. And then it says, Walo ala untha, even if it's for a woman. Well, what would be the point of mentioning that? Gold is halal for a woman. But the type of gold that they're talking about here that's permissible for women is considered huli. Huli is a type of gold that is used for decoration like gold chains, necklaces, rings, so on and so forth. This is permissible for women. But it's impermissible even for a woman to possess and have these vessels of gold and silver. Now, that jewelry is something different. Okay, there's an ex we're talking, yes, yeah, so this prohibition here is dealing with vessels, okay. not gold and silver, uh, jewelry, not jewelry, but just vessels. Okay? And then it says, what the sihu taharatuha minha. So here's, here's another issue. Let's say, for example, you have a gold vessel or a silver vessel in your home. Is it permissible to make wudu from these vessels? Huh? You say no. Like, the ulama say yes. I didn't, I didn't give you an answer. No, no, listen, listen. What the sihu taharatu minha. It is permissible. It is correct your wudu or your purification from the vessels, even though it's haram for you to have it. So some of the early mad they'll say to sih salah ma ithim. In other words, your your wudu or the sih wudu, your wudu or your purification would be permissible, but you might have sin for having it in your possession. Do you understand? Right. Now they make another exception of when it is permissible to use either gold or silver vessels. So gold vessels are impermissible at all times. There will never be a chance where a person can say, yes, I have gold or silver vessels. They are impermissible. Okay? So what is permissible? إِلَّا ضَبَّةً يَسِيرَةً if you have, and this is what we have here. First of all, that, that which can be used and be permissible from vessels, it has to have, it has to be a silver. First of all, it has to be silver. From the exceptions that would make it permissible sometimes to use, it has to have silver. And it has to be babbatun. In other words, it has to be soldered or welded into it. So here's an example of it. Say we have a vessel, a silver vessel. And there's a small portion of it that has some type of, uh, I'm sorry. Say we have a vessel and it has a small, not a silver vessel. Let me erase that. We have a vessel made of something else, a metal or what have you. And we have a small, uh, some welding of some silver in it to keep it together. See, for example, a crack. We don't, like I said, this is not relevant now. A seam. A or Yeah, like a seam of it has some silver in it, Right. You, you use that seam to keep the, the welded together. That piece there is silver. So they say, babbatan yasiratan, a small piece of silver, a small piece is used there to weld it together, lihaja, for a necessity or for a need. Is that clear? So then it has to be, it has to be silver, it has to be, it has to be solder or welded, a small amount and out of need. And that'll make it relative. That'll make it not relative. It'll make it. It'll make it to the point where you can use it. Permissible. This will make 
Mind you, if it was if it had some silver in it, a small piece of it. Say, for example, you have a bowl and you have nothing else to fix your bowl. So you want to use a piece of silver to weld it together. Yeah. Like I said, this this may not be as relevant in our times today, but it just it's important to discuss. All right. This is why we're going to finish this chapter today, inshallah. So you say means that um, you, you didn't have anything else other than perhaps, well. perhaps, whatever you did. So, so the thing in need is is relative when it comes to need, and likewise is also relative when it comes to a small amount. If I say, for example, if I have a bowl or a vessel, and you say to me, brother Ali, you know this is too much silver and this is impermissible, and I might say, well, to me this is a small amount, to you it's a large amount. So how do we determine what's a large amount and what's a small amount? It's also a good, this is another side based note. On the, is it based on the size of the vessel you're preparing? Not. What determines a small amount and a large amount? Weight. No, not the weight. You're paying, I guess you're owner paying enough. I'm sorry? You're owner paying enough. What's, you said it's, you said it's small. Like what determines, what, okay, what, is there a rule that says this is, this Small amount equals a small amount, and this amount equals a large amount. So how do we know? Right, but what's considered a large amount, and what's considered a small amount? So every individual? Right, but maybe maybe it, maybe it needs a lot of it. You understand? Maybe it needs a. But the question is, the question is, what is considered a small amount? A small amount to me might not be a small amount to you, right? Like, so this here, Yoruja, this goes back to a ruling in Islam, deals with Urf. We spoke about it last week, uh, uh, legal maxims. And so one of them is Al-Ada Muhakkama. Al-Ada Muhakkama. In other words, that which is... Uh, that which is um, normalized or understood based on a particular culture is the norm. Like it can be accepted in certain legislation. And and the, huh? That's this is called orf. It's called the customs. So customarily, so the people in this message it here, a small amount, most people might say a small amount equal to is, you know, we all agree that this is a small amount and we all may agree that this is a large amount. But if we were in another society, the way that they look at it may be somewhat different. Another example of this, of this principle here, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَاشِرَهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَعَاشِرَهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah jalla wa ta'ala says, live with them in goodness. I'm talking about your spouses. All right? But what's goodness? How do we define goodness? Goodness to people here in Philadelphia might be different than goodness to people that's in China or people that are in Russia or people that are in South America or people that are in Europe or so on and so forth. Goodness, it, it really goes back to the culture. And so anytime we have certain verses in the Quran where Allah says like uh, here, وَعَشَرَهُنَّ بالمعروف. What's good? How do we determine good? It's based on that which, which is known in that particular culture. Right now, we're, that's, that's, that's not an issue. The issue is, how do you determine what's good? Same thing here. How do we determine what's a small amount, what's a large amount? What are the rules? Yeah, the rules is, goes back to the order. It goes back to the customs, the customary belief of the people. Yes. All right, is that clear? Yeah. on test. So then it says, Rahimahullah, وَتُكْرَهُ مُبَاشَرَتُهَا لِغَيْرِ حَاجَةٍ And it's also hated for a person to, when well, you have that small piece of silver that you actually use it right away or put your mouth to it or so on and so forth. You should not, you know, mubasha, you should not uh, immediately face or deal with that piece, that piece of silver that, were, that was soldered together. So, hated to do that? Yes, it's hated. And then you're using that piece that was welded together. Avoid 
Yeah, avoid that particular section. Okay. We want to get to that. Actually, that's that's the whole. That's actually I mentioned that as well. Utensils. Uh, but we're going to talk about that now. So the next issue, as we slide on. So now we're going to talk about issues that have to do with non-Muslims. Non-Muslims have vessels. They have utensils, right? Is it permissible for the Muslims to use these things? Yes or no? So the ulama of Al-Islam, they mention that it is permissible to use vessels, utensils of non-Muslims. It is permissible. <clears throat> but why would that even be an issue? Somebody might say, well, why would that be an issue using ut utensils and vessels of non-Muslims? Why, why is there a distinction here? Does anyone know why? Huh? How are you in their home? Hmm? Why is there a distinction? Because uh, because they're known to be uh, uh what I'm looking for like uh, spiritually intimate judges. But how? Do, what does that have to do? Spiritually and physically? I don't know about it. It's Benny Adam. The rule on the human being is not that they're not nudges. The verse in the Quran? No, Nejah soon is talking about their iman and how they believe. It has nothing to do with their skin. What about the spirit? Yeah. Okay, let's see. I would say for the door dietary, their dietary, you know, their dietary law. They don't follow the same law. I sent. So then the issue here, it has to do with food. They may eat food that are that's impermissible for Muslims to eat. They may eat food. For example, they may drink alcohol. They might use their vessels for alcohol. They might, you know, use pork or cook things that Muslims don't eat and the same utensils are being used. Okay? So then, the origin is that it is permissible to use the utensils because the origin is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. Unless you know for surety that they've been used uh, in things that are impermissible. Thank you. Well, just avoid it, period. Avoid it. Avoid it, period. Do not interact with it if you if you can do without. Right. I just mentioned the mouth because it's easier to understand. But if you don't have to use that porch, that side of it, then use another side is better. Right. Right. Oh, avoid it when you're using it to drink or eat. Or oh, whatever, exactly. Yeah, cleaning it might can be. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then avoiding um, utensils of um, kufars when we know that their dietary laws against our dietary Right. The, the thing is, you can use them. It's permissible to use right. those utensils. Right. Okay? As long as you know that. Right. Okay, so we spoke about that last week. We spoke about certainty is not removed with doubt. Mm -hmm. Right? So the origin of utensils is that they're not nedges. The, the origin of any utensil is that it's not impure to use, that it has some negligence. That's not the origin. The origin is that it's tar, that it's pure. Okay? Unless you know that it was used for something that is impure. Is that clear? Because you you have a, you know, you go crazy thinking, oh, well, they might have did this, or they might have did that, but they might have did this, or they might have did that. So you can't function like that. So then we need rules. We need rules and a structure, a structure how we approach things. And without this structure... This is why we have a lot of Muslims are confused about a lot of things. Oh, I don't know. Can I? They might have did this or that. Here, you'll hear, oh, I don't want to eat their food. Da, 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 da. The origin is that, you know, it's permissible until you know for surety something else. Okay? Fight. The next one, the next part here, he says, Even if it is not permissible to eat, the slaughter animals of the non-Muslims. Is that is that is that correct? Is it, even if it's not permissible. Yeah. In other words, their vessels are permissible to use, even if their meat is not permissible for you to use to eat. Their meat is not permissible for us to eat. That sounds like a contradiction. Ah, 
Listen, listen very carefully. The statement is as follows. It is permissible to use the vessels of non-Muslims. In there you tell us it's permissible to use them. Okay? Even if it is not permissible to, to eat their meat. If it's not permissible to eat their meat. I just, we're, we're going to move on. I just want to understand that first and then we'll move on to something else. Meaning, we'll explain that. But I need you to... I lost you. Right. right now, it says, It says, That their vessels and bowls are permissible to use. Huh? وَلَوْ لَمْ تَحِلَّ Even if their meat is impermissible to use. What does that mean? So that's, that's an example of which would be the following. Let's say you go to a, a place where you know that they slaughtered meat in, uh, incorrectly. All right? Their meat, maybe they cook, you know, uh, pork or what have you. All right? There's another hadith of the Prophet He said that don't use their utensils unless you don't have anything else. If you don't have anything else, use their utensils or what have you and wash them and clean them. Okay, so then their meat may not be permissible for you to eat, but their vessels are permissible to use. Is that clear? All right, so now let's get back to So non-Muslims, we can't eat their food? Is that true? So then, the meat of the non-Muslims, they, they're broken down into two categories. The non-Muslims are broken down into two categories. So the first category is Ahlul Kitab. Ahlul Kitab, menhum, who are they? The Jews and the, and the Christians. So there are different rules dealing with Christians and Jews as opposed to dealing with the Majus. The Majus are people who worship walls and statues and so on and so forth. Okay. That group right there is impermissible to eat their meat. Okay? Whereas, but however, it is permissible to use their vessels. Is that clear? With, with regards to the Christians and the Jews, as Allah Jalla says in the Quran, Allah Jalla says in the Quran that the food of the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, are permissible for you. The food of the people in the book, of the book, the Christians and the Jews, are permissible for you to eat. Is that clear? Thank you. So pay attention. The, non, the non-Muslims are broken down into two categories. Right. Either you're a Christian or a Jew, meaning the people of the book. They're called people of the book because they were given scripture. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have people that were not given any scripture and they don't believe in anything. Right? right? They're not a Christian or a Jew, then their food, their meat is impermissible. So what does that mean? Let's give an example here. Here, a lot of Muslims go to the Chinese restaurants, right? So you might go into a Chinese restaurant, you might see a big Buddha in the back. But a lot of a lot of Muslims go there and they buy like chicken and broccoli and right, right beef and broccoli and whatever else people get. Yeah. Now I'm not talking about you, Shake. <laughs> All right. So 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 what I'm saying is, in this case here, it's impermissible. Generally, yes. How how is it halal? If, if how what does halal mean? Well, that's different. But but we don't but the, but you don't know that when you walk listen when you walk into a place a Chinese restaurant and have a Buddha there it's pretty common that okay the understanding here is that they're Buddhists like of Saddam rahmatullah was understand was understood here is that they are Buddhists all right I mean what do you think if you see a person walking around with a cross on their neck you gonna think they're Muslim you gonna think they're Buddhists what are you gonna think ah if you see a person walking with a kufi on the throat what are you gonna you think they're Muslim yeah, that which is apparent. It's apparent that okay. It's apparent that these people may be Buddhists. But so then, the next issue is 
ولو لم تحل ذبائحهم وثيابهم ان ان جهل حالها with regards to the clothing of non-muslims the origin is what is that it's permissible or impermissible permissible why is that because there, because there's no prohibition the origin of clothing and we'll talk about that later in the salat we're not going to get into the issue of clothes but in general the or, the origin of clothing is that it is pure not impure right unless in juhila halu that means if you are unclear of the condition of them right so then they even go so far as to discuss undergarments that a person may wear why would they discuss undergarments like underwears undershirts so on and so forth when it talks about the clothing of non-muslims why would they discuss that because generally non-muslims they don't cleanse themselves the way muslims do when they use the bathroom right they don't have the same procedures all right so all of these things so even talk about all of this this is all issues that you know that come up but so are we clear up until this point The next part here we're going to talk about this chapter false false also, also I want to mention that this chapter is probably one of the shortest chapters that we'll cover Babel Ania this is a very small chapter we're almost done the whole chapter um inshallah ta'ala next week we will move on into uh the chapter of istinja and cleansing yourself using the bathroom and so on and so forth So here the Sheikh rahimahullah He says wala yatharu jildu maytatan bidibagh All right so first of all we have to understand something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is impermissible us for us to deal with mayta Allahu jalla wa ala says hurrimat alaykum al mayta What is a mayta Dead animals any dead animal Animals that are on land Okay, so if I take and slaughter an animal, is the animal dead? Yeah. So is that considered meat? Yeah. 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 In the fiqh of Imam Ahmed, in the fiqh of Imam Ahmed, he says, وَلَا يَطْحَرُ جِلْدُ مَيْتَةً بِدِبَاغٍ That the skin of these dead animals cannot be cured or cannot be, uh, cannot become pure even if you were to tan them. Even if you were to tan them. Tana means, you know, to dry them out, you know, how you, We were like leather shoes and all that stuff. They, those those um, things were tanned and turned into things that are usable. Okay. And Nabi alayhi salat. But somebody, there are numerous ahadith that show the opposite of that. There are numerous ahadith that show the opposite. There are numerous ahadith that show that using these types of uh, the skin of dead animals that are pure in their life using their skin uh we, we, there are numerous ahadith that support that however so imam ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala yeah this is not the position of the majority of the scholars of al-islam with regards to this this particular issue so he there's a hadith where the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam he says ayyu ma ihabin dubig faqad tahura He says, any skin that has been, uh, any skin of the animal, as long as you tan the skin, then it becomes pure. It becomes pure, right? So then the question is, well, why would Imam Ahmed take the position that the skin does not become pure if you tan it? Does that make sense? Fine. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he uses, there's another narration, and then Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كتب إلى جهينا. He wrote a letter to a group of people. 
He said, Inni kuntu rakhastu lakum fi jalud al mayta. He said, Indeed, before I made it easy for you guys to use the skin of the dead animals. فَإِذَا جَاءَكُمْ كِتَابِي هَذَا فَلَا تَنْفَعُوا فَلَا تَنْتَفِعُوا مِنْ مَيْتَةِ بِإِهَابٍ وَلَا عَصَرٍ رواه أبو داود. He said, but when this letter reaches you, no longer benefit. You can no longer use the skin of these animals to benefit from them. طيب. Some of the companions, they said, أَتَانَا كِتَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَبْلَ وَفَاتِهِ بِشَهْرٍ أَوْ شَهْرٍ وَهُوَ النَّاسِخٌ لِمَا قَبْلَهُ So they said that, first of all, the first hadith that was mentioned here, it mentions that the Prophet ﷺ, any skin that you have, as long as you tan it, then it can become pure. Obviously, this is talking about the animals that are pure in their lifetime, right? Then there's another narration after that that states that once this animal, he said, once this letter reaches you, then what I made permissible before is no longer permissible. And they made a point, the Sahaba, they made a point to mention that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned this one month before he died. What's the significance of that? We have in Islam, and uh, the science of usul al-fiqh, there's something called, and we're not going to get into it, it's very deep, but it's something called nasikh wal mansukh. Nasikh and what this means is that abrogator is something that is abrogated. Does anyone know what that means? We have something that is an abrogator, and we have up something else that is abrogated. And what that means is we have text. We might have a hadith wherein the Prophet ﷺ said, do this. Then after he changes the ruling of that particular thing. This, it means it's been abrogated. In other words, it's been changed. And the thing that changes it is called the nasikh or the abrogator, that which changes that particular ruling. There's another hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyaratu kubur fal an zuruhu or zuruha kemaqa sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, I used to prevent you from visiting the graves, but now you can go visit the graves. So this here shows that this hadith here is also an abrogator. And the previous ruling has been abrogated. Is that clear? It's clear? Right. So then, this issue, Imam Ahmed, he holds it be, to be impermissible that uh, Imam Ahmed holds it to be impermissible uh, to use uh, animals that have been, uh, that are dead meta and to purify their skin, it will not become pure. He believes that it will not become pure. But then there's another narration where he takes the position of the majority of the scholars. Okay, so he has two positions on this particular issue. So that, the second narration from Imam Ahmed, that came after, you know, later on? Or was of Imam Ahmed or the Prophet, alayhi salatu uh, Imam Ahmed, you said he just... He, just he has two positions on this issue. Right. Right, and then the other one is you can. Right. So you saying which one is the last? No, no, yeah, right. That which one is the last? Allah Allah. Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah. That that requires a little added research on my part. I didn't go that deep into it, but that's a good question. I'm gonna do that for you, inshallah. Okay. Right. So then, Imam Ahmed. In his fiqh, or Imam al-Hajjawi, he says, So even though they believe it to be, uh, they believe that it, it, it cannot be purified if it's a dead animal, even though he believes it can't be purified, he said, but you can still benefit from it. You can still use it as long as you use it in something that is dry. As long as, it, as, long as it's dried out, even though it's considered nejis, but you can still use it as long as it's not wet. We have some things that are nejas, but if it gets wet, then some of that nejas or impurities will go on something else. This is why they mentioned that if you're going to use it, make sure that it's dry so that the nejasa cannot rub off onto something else. And obviously they said in these animals, they must be pure in their lifetime. The animals must be pure in their lifetime. Now, obviously, this, this chapter, it gets very extensive 
but I'm trying to keep it as summarized as possible. And now the next issue with regards to these animals, uh, it says, وَعَظَمُوا wa وَلَبْنُهَا وَكُلُّ أَجْزَائِهَا نَجِسَةٌ غَيْرُ أَوْحُ So every aspect, so now that we have this, this animal that passed away, we don't know why it passed away, but the bones of this animal is considered nudges. Why is it considered nudges? I'll give you an example. We're going to think of an animal, a sheep. Can we eat sheep? Right. A sheep, are they pure in their lifetime? Yes. All right. So say we slaughtered a sheep, we cooked it, and we took a leg, for example, pulled a leg from it. Is that leg nudges? Huh? No. It's pure, right? All right. Let's say we found a sheep that was dead. You know how it died? It was just laying there on the ground dead. And somebody came with a, a knife and cut the leg off. Is that leg nudges? Yes. yes. Why is it nudges? Because it was died and it wasn't slaughtered. Understand? So he says, Some animals, after they die, they, they still may have milk inside of them. So if you're able to get that milk out of that dead animal that's, that has not been slaughtered, that milk is also considered nudges. It's also considered nudges. The scholars of Islam differ with regards to eggs. Say if you find an animal that's dead, like a chicken, and it has eggs, it has an egg inside. They differ with regards to that. Why? Because they say the egg has a shell on it, a protector. So therefore, the najasa from the body will not be able to penetrate the shell. But there's some difference of opinion. I'm not going to get into that, but just wanted to mention that briefly. Um, the next one is, وَكُلُّ أَجْزَائِهَا نَجِسَتُونَ So every aspect of this dead animal that has been, that died without being slaughtered is nejis or filthy. And then here we go, there's an exception to this. Except for what? So in general, except for three things. The three things are or four things rather. The four thing, the four things are the hair, the hair of those animals. Shaaraha. So say you have that an animal that was pure in its lifetime, the hair of it is pure to use, right? The suf. So if it is uh, a sheep, the wool, you can still benefit from the wool. And likewise, the wabr. The wabr is like the hair of camels, their skin or their hair. And feathers. Like feathers, like birds and stuff like that. Okay? Yeah, like the down feathers. Yeah. All right, so here's an issue. Here's an issue that uh, I want to say a few years back, some of the students, we discussed it, but never came up with a, a clear answer on it. Uh, because generally, the only animals that you can use their hair are animals that are pure in their lifetime. Is that clear? Right. In our city here, we use brushes. Brushes, they have like boar bristles. What is a boar? Does anyone know what a boar is? It's pig. So question now is, is it permissible to use a brush? I know you. I know it's coming. Yeah, is it permissible to use huh? a hairbrush? All right? You, yeah, you thought they were plastic? Yeah. Hair brush has bristles. What are, huh? <laughs> no, it's not plastic. Shake. Well, he, 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 he ain't in the room this thing. Oh, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Stop for the love. Yeah, so, um, so essentially, <laughs> the issue is about the brush no. with the boar bristles. Right. Is it permissible? Yes or no? That's what I need to know. Even the skin, I want to know. Like I mean, so in general, in general, if it's pig skin shoes or just pig skin shoes. So according to what we covered here, then it's what? The pig skin. Because it wasn't something. Huh? I can't hear you. Not permissible. Why is it impermissible? Based on the principle. 
wasn't permissible while it was alive and sure it's not going to be permissible when it's dead right. I mean I'm sure they have that's alternatives the, that's the premise, yeah that's the premise uh, about the shoes just the skin but the but I will say this anything yeah. from the pig after it's dead I'm, I'm, anything I'm the, 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 so the pig is impermissible while it's living and likewise when it's dead you can't benefit from it now this is probably the position of the majority of the early man. But then there are also, there are cases where there's an issue and uh, it says, can you use the hair of a pig to sew garments and stuff like that, like their skin or something like that. There's an issue, the fuqaha, they talk about that. So some of them make exceptions. But I'm not, I'm not trying to look for a loophole here. I'm saying for me, to stay away, right? But the point of me mentioning that these issues aren't black and white, but the general position is that you should stay away from it. Anything that's doubtful, stay away from it. Now, me sure. No, you, they got other types of brushes, inshallah. Let me, let me clarify something for Ahmed, because I know he got tripped up on that brushes thing. Most people don't know that it's a type of brush that yeah, things like synthetic. Yeah, okay, right. I, I, I know when I was growing up, they were poor. 100%. You know even put the 100% on it. You know, but they don't. That's, they don't do that no more. Okay. Hamid? Yeah. How many lie? How many? You all right? I'm all right. I ain't going to ask. Thank you. So then the, next, the last part here. وَمَا أُبِينَ مِنْ حَيٍّ فَهُوَ كَمَيْتَتِي Whatever is cut off from an animal that is living... All right, so this issue here. Say, for example, ma'ubina min hayyan fahuwa ka meitatihi. Say, for example, we have a sheep. All right? We have a sheep. All right? It's alive. You know, somebody's playing around with the sheep. Somebody does something very evil. And, and, you know, they take an animal and they cut a piece of the leg off while still living. Right? People do some net evil things, right? Somebody did that to your sheep? See? So somebody cut an arm off of a sheep that's living. That The sheep, is that sheep considered meta? Yes or no? No. Is the sheep still living? Yes. Is that sheep nudges? No. No. But that piece that was cut off from it, is that piece nudges? Yes. Why is it nudges? Because the ruling is the the principle, the qaida is that ma ubina min hayyin fahuwa ka meitatihi. Whatever is cut off from something that is living is as if you found it dead. Does that make sense? Whatever was cut off from something that is living, an example would be if you cut off a leg of an animal that's pure in its lifetime, obviously. Right? Then a ruling, it takes the same ruling as if it was dead. And we, it was dead, meaning dead and not slaughtered. Let me clarify that. Not just being dead, being dead, but it was not slaughtered. So if we have a sheep, for example, we keep using, let's use a cow. A cow, is that cool? A cow. All right, let's use a cow, right? So we have a cow. Um, someone wants to cut off a leg of a cow while the cow's still living. That's cruel. Somebody would do that, right? That leg that was cut off from the cow is considered nedges. You can't use it. But if you slaughter the, the cow uh, uh, properly and, and you can cut a leg off and eat, that's different. It's not nedges then. That's what I was going to say. What were you going to say? Somebody, um, no, I have a lot of sheep that way. MashaAllah. And somebody cut off the leg. MashaAllah. You know how to pay the cow on that sheep? Huh? No, they went out to eat to, to graze, right? No, I'm talking about you. You said you have a lot of sheep at home. Yeah. Do you know how to pay zakat on it? Zakat. Yeah, I know. Oh, how many? Huh? No. <laughs> Go ahead, Sheikh. I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody they went out to graze and uh, and somebody, you know, uh, with that uh, one 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 of that that legs. Okay. Yeah, so when it came off. She couldn't move. She she was just lying. You know, mm. She couldn't do anything. And uh, about three days, I saw that she, she was suffering. And uh, she just have a new new you know newborn. Mm. So 
So I have to call a, a brother to come and slaughter me. <clears throat> You gonna take it to the animal thing? <laughs> no, they, they don't have animals. Come on, come on. What are you talking about? The animal doctor? Yeah. For what? Talking about on the farm. It's a farm, and the, and the purpose of it is to eat an animal. Doctor, okay. Eat your own doctor. Yeah, you get the animal farm. Alhamdulillah. So, 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 now listen, guys. What we did was we covered this whole chapter tonight, but it's a very, it's more extensive than what I mentioned. But this is a quick summary. Um, inshallah ta'ala, things were clear. Uh, but that piece we still just talk about there is something from the receiving. So that be since slowly and they don't be you know, allowed to. What be? Oh, for, okay, so listen, about that cow that was mentioned, right? So with that cow, if you cut off the leg of the cow while it's living, that leg is nudges. But if you slaughter it, that cow, after you cut the leg off, you slaughter it, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, you slaughter the cow, and you cut the other leg off. The one leg is halal to eat, and the other leg is nudges, not just haram, it's nudges. Is that clear? No. Tayyip. Any questions, Akwan? I got one. Mm. When you're talking about the best, all vessels up on this, mm -hmm. other than gold and silver. Or, or that mix. Or is mixed. Right. <clears throat> So we we somewhere like <clears throat> quick far, right? You saying that the vessel they have is permissible. Mm. But if they die if they die it is impermissible, something right is contrary to what we follow. If they die is like that, then I mean in one sense I'm I'm understanding that they, the vessels that they use, they put in permissible things, then we should shun away from them. Absolutely. That. The prophet Ali. But it sounds like you came behind it and said that we can still use them anyway. You can. And Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam, and Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam, he said, they, it was a hadith with some of the Sahaba. They said, you know, we, we're around the non Muslim and they have vessels and so on and so forth. No. Should we use them? No. The first, the Messenger of Allah, Alayhi Salatu Salam, he said, no, don't use them. Unless, if you can't find any other vessels to use, okay. then you can use them. Just make sure you wash them and clean them. Before you use them. Yes. Okay, cool. But it's not the origin. Is that you? If they have them, obviously they may have some it's things. Like in. If you were starving, I understand. No, no, it's not like you're starving. No, I'm talking about if you were starving. And I know what you're saying. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. You, what you say? I'm not saying it takes the same ruling that is out of durura, out of necessity. That's something different. Okay, out of necessity. Because it's not a necessity. Yeah, it's not. You might it might not be a necessity. Right, right. You might not need to. You might want to use it. Anyway. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> well, inshallah, when we get to that issue of Dorota, we'll explain how we're supposed to look at Because even when it comes to things that are necessities, we, we have things that we want, right? They're called, so it's broken down into different categories. They're called, um, we have things called Hajat. We have Dororiyat, Hajat, and Takmilat. Or I think in that order. So what that would mean essentially is that we have things that are necessary. In other words, if there are, we have things that are necessary. Meaning, if you don't have them, your life is in the balance. I can't see a vessel taking that same category. That's number one. Number two, we have things that we want, we need, but our life is not in the balance. Like what? Like what? Cell phones. Cell phones nowadays have become a thing of great need, but if you don't have it, your life is not in the balance. Then we have things that are tech me lat, things that are, we don't need them, but if we had them, it would make our life a lot easier. Right. A lot more easier. For example, you know, you might have you might have a car that's old and beat up, but you buy a brand new one. Right? So then in general, these categories are broken down into how it affects a person's life in terms of how they need them and use them. So when we mention vessels, Allahu Alam, if you can say a vessel, if you don't use it, your life is in a balance. Because what you did was you compared that to a situation out of necessity. Like if it, it, no, I didn't compare it, I'm saying that it's just a similarity there to me. Okay. That's the first thing my mind shot to. You know, I ain't Alright. So, right. If I put somebody down, you know, it allows you to do vessels, you know, to eat that bull vessel or silver vessel. But if I don't have to what's the what's the reason? Why? Why would we not, why are we not allowed to use them, you know, to eat? Are we not allowed to use what? Gold, Gold and silver. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said it was impermissible. That's, that's the answer. 
one of the reasons that were mentioned is that because it's for them, when you talk about gold and silver vessels, it's for them in this life and for the Muslims in the next life. At any event, um, inshallah, we're going to start with that. Next week, inshallah, I don't know about the testament. I think people got scared. Huh? Yeah. Is, I know, right? It's a, <laughs> talk about Tessa. Oh, man, he's going to make me write something. Wait. <laughs> so, inshallah, Tyler, next week, uh, we'll go into the chapter of Istinja. How long is this? On animal. Yeah, you're supposed to. I mean, how, how do you, how you go about it? Sheik, that's a whole okay, nother clap. But we're, we're going to talk about that. Honestly, I'm not. Like, nice, Mashallah. Well, I mean, he, the reason why I put it out there because he said he owns sheep. Right, right. Um, if, I never mentioned it because most of us here don't own sheep. But since he said he owns sheep, I just threw it out there. He pays a cot on it or not. I, I wasn't trying to put you on blast. You just, you know. At any event, we're going to stop with that. Inshallah, we'll pick up next week. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.